my man, six pack lap of that. We got uh, Carlos Peterson, and you were just saying, my man. Well, I you were. Yeah, you okay. owe me one there. So um, one of the first things I would like to say, thank you for having me for the first time on your program or, or show. And I would love to ask you one main question. Besides the long years, you know me giving a ramp to the U.S. Uh, my very first time in 2017. I got to ask you one main question. What took you so long? <laughs> That's right, man. And you know what? Like, this is your coming out party. I was the commentator for the powerlifting uh, world championships in June. And you came in, in, in the B flight. And I remember you talking to me there and you saying, everybody's going to know who I am after this. Like, this is going to be my coming out party, so to speak. I'm paraphrasing. And if people didn't know, now they know. So going into the world championships, you're in the B flight. Did you know you were going to do what you're going to do coming in sixth overall, just outside of the top five? Oh, and by the way, if you got your third squat, which was a world record attempt, and if you got your third deadlift, which was 365, you would have ended up with um, just half a kilo shy of 870. That'd be three kilos off the podium. Three kilos yep. off the podium. You know, if 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 all went to plan, and you got and you got your lifts. Well, you gotta be you gotta be more specific. Hold on, you gotta be more specific. Not just any podium, the final podium, because I did podium, and that's my main aim right now. As we go down into the conversation, carry on. Yeah. So, did you know? After this World Championships, people are gonna talk about me. I'm gonna be on everybody's radar. Yes. Yes. 100%. And, and so go ahead. What was your feeling going in this? Because your, listen, your road to Sheffield video was amazing. We'll get into your past in the background story in a second. I want to talk about worlds in Sheffield and the battle of the 93s. Um, but <laughs> walking into this, you know, what, what was your thoughts like with all the other 93s there, knowing they're looking past you? And were you telling yourself, I'm going to make a statement this is my pathway to Sheffield. Did you foresee a possible Sheffield invite? And was all that on your mind? Uh, the first year for Sheffield, firstly, uh, uh, 2023 Sheffield, I was looking forward for that wild card uh, in which I saw roughly about five, four to five wild cards. Uh, and due to my performance in New Zealand, which was Commonwealth Championship, I traveled all the way there. Trust me, it was quite costly. And... One of my main performers, it did not go as well as uh, what we could say I was wanted to, but uh, I was able to punch my ticket to Worlds. And once I had punched my ticket to Worlds, I turned and said, hey, so I'm not canceling this Worlds again or putting it on any other, um, what we could say, schedule or let something come in front of it. I canceled Arnold's again for that year. For 2023, just focusing on either Sheffields or Worlds. But when I saw Sheffields, everything was uh, already um, set out. I was like, okay, one more wild card, then it granted another lift. I was like, all right, cool, no problem. Just continue working. That's me. Continue working, continue setting the pace, see what's up. Set out to, to be one of the best. I am one of the best now. Detroit in Brazil by 12 and a half kilos. And trust me, it wasn't. A walk in the park. When when you look at the previous Sheffield, so the ninety threes were all there, um, and Amar was was brought in, and people will draw parallels and yeah. say you're like that. You're like the next Amar, and Amar came in to threaten for the squat world record. Do you feel that's a fair comparison, or are you telling yourself, my friend, Amar came in? for that squat world record and nothing else. But you're coming in for something much more. I'm coming not just uh, for a squat record. I'm coming for myself. To show the world what hard work, perseverance, passion, patience, the full nine yards is all about. It's not just uh, going out there, setting, setting a record or breaking a record. It's the blood, the sweat, the tears uh, that we're able to put through and the agony that has set us uh, that uh, level and able to achieve it. Everybody want to become one of the best in the world or even the greatest. 
But to sit out there and say, here's what, I've come from here and I'm able to do this, it, it, would, it gives you more for yourself. It gives you more for courage, more enthusiasm, better work, better perspective. And besides that, the negativism that uh, people tell at you and so forth, you're the only person who can say, here's what, I want to be different. I want to be that different person that people, whether they look up to me or not look up to me, they could be able to say something about it. Whether good, bad, or ugly, we could be able to set a different path. And that is the beauty part about it. So going into um, World Championships, I put our cards down. I canceled uh, Arnold's, as mentioned. That was Arnold's in Brazil. I tried to do one or two strongmans. I get my ass whooped better. I was able to push myself. Uh, no coach, no um, no big fancy training or so. I don't have a calibrated plates like all oh, the top rank athletes. God's grace, I'm looking forward to buy my first and able to set out a better path. So, as mentioned, I train, push out some work, uh, see what's up. Uh, I did attempted twice uh, that uh, squat record, and even now. <laughs> what well, that's a different page by itself. So for worlds, uh, I attempted twice. Uh, I had failed it once, uh, and then the second one uh, I got through with it. So I was like, I was super confident for myself. Nevertheless, my best uh, in competition was uh, three twenty five, three twenty seven point five kilos. So I was like, I can PR this. I can do this. But I believe that wasn't the day for me. And again, as I set out, uh, uh, I said then. I'll say it again. What is for you will be for you. Once you're humble enough, once you're disciplined, it will come your way. All you got to do is have patience and have that perseverance so you can be able to achieve it at any time. But don't ever give up. So when you come into Sheffield, you're not looking just like, sure, the squat world record, it's there, sure. But what are you looking to achieve? Uh, one of my main achievements, uh, besides a certain podium or besides podium in, in which a lot of people I have a lot of negatives and I have a lot of me well you could say mediocre people pelting shit at me from local to international. Oh Carlos, you're just going to compete, you're just going to make a name for yourself. So I tell people this I'm not just going to compete. I'm going to compete among the best. I'm one of the best now and I'll say it again. I will place among top five guns in the world. And everybody's like, yo, where this guy came from? Good. I already got tested out of competition. I just can't wait to, to get tested in competition again. Every single competition I've been tested, and I would like to reiterate that. Because a lot of people think I'm on drugs. A lot. So I'm not running away from the fact. So with that now, Sheffield is the cream of the cream. Everyone is looking forward to accomplish something, to achieve something. One of my main achievements is setting the bar higher, not just for myself, but for more so the upcoming athletes who will be behind, behind me right here in Guyana and also the South American Hemisphere because it's not just a country I'm rep representing. I'm representing the whole of South America. I'm totally a bit, uh, what we could say, angry that Brazil is not there. I'm always looking forward to compete against that fellow, Mr. David Coimbra. I look up to him as a very senior athlete and damn, I never get the opportunity. I was to get the opportunity at Malta, but he pulled out due to some grind injury. That's what he told me. All right? And he, he wished me the best of it. So, again, Sheffield, uh, I'm going to, again, I'm going to set a statement. I'm going to make uh, or even rewrite some records because uh, I'm not backing off. As I said it in my bio, and I'll say it uh, here now. You guys know exactly what I'm capable of. I know my bench is whack, but careful, do not underestimate me. I'm coming. The pie is already being baked. I just want my slice, buddy. <laughs> I love this. That was that's a phenomenal semi, by the way. I loved your video. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about like all the testing and stuff because I kind of put wraps that up. Uh, but going into Sheffield, do you who do you think is gonna win the battle of the 93s? Who who I think I'm not putting myself in there, I'm not putting Kaiko, I'm not putting Aiden, and I'm not putting Honlan. It's gonna be a battle of the battle. Of the 493s, how many of them are going to be totaling over 900 kilos? Myself. 
<laughs> Solo, you just yourself. Well, whosoever comes first wins, right? That's right. I'll be I'll be the first to total nine hundred. Any other is second. There it is. There it is. And what do you think this does for powerlifting as a whole in in Guyana in in all South America? To see you, because you were the lone lifter from your nation at the World Championships. You were the lone one there. And what does it mean to be the only one at the world stage, to be the first to go to Sheffield in representing all of South America? My brother, it's a great honor, privilege, hard work, as mentioned, perseverance, passion, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of sacrifice. And to get there... It wasn't a walk in the park. I have, uh, again, I have a lot of um, negativism around me and so forth. But those are things that drives me to keep going, keep pushing, and even continue being the best person than yesterday. And one of the best things we could do is to look at yourself uh, and always judge yourself first before you're able to judge others. So... Here in Guyana, yes, uh, as I mentioned uh, on uh, Sabado Sensations, I told them, I was like, everybody here in Guyana, they want to compete, they want to get there and so forth. But everybody's looking for benefits. I'm not looking for that benefit right away. It took me years to reach where I am. Yes, uh, good luck for those who, or we could say, started, reached there, and willing to maintain it. I'm not one of those guys. I'm one of those guys who had to start from rock bottom, climb, 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 climb. I do like today, yes, I'm the big bad wolf in South America, not just Guyana. And the beauty part about it is that every time I come out to compete and people hear that, hey, Carlos is competing. It was like, what? Nah, if Carlos is competing, I'm not going there. <laughs> so one of the main things I said to myself, every time I compete, I must able to break my personal best. Either squat Bench or deadlift. And so so at the World Championships, obviously, you qualified. You said you had to go through the Commonwealth to qualify. What is the qualification pathway for a Guyanese lifter? You have to go to another international event before you go to Worlds? It's not just to, to be the national champion? No. Uh, in Guyana, is different. However... I like myself, I can vote for myself. Uh, if you don't do a regional, you're not qualified for the Worlds. I like uh, now, I'm a world rank athlete. I have already ticked off all the boxes. So uh, every year now, I can go to Worlds. That's if I don't bow out or any injury that has me to pull out from Worlds. It's not like the US, you, you, you make the top two in any way class, you qualify. Here is different, man. So it's a it's the long road. You took a long, road, long road to get it. In New Zealand is a hell of a flight from where you're at. Fourteen hours. It's, it's crazy. It, it like a whole nother day time zone. Like it, yeah. I, I've done podcasts with guys from that time zone, and it's literally it's my Sunday. It's their Monday. Like then yeah. a whole nother day and competing. Yeah, in the badly. future, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's a, you're a time traveler. You become a freaking time traveler. How badly did that affect you in terms of the time zone change, the flights and all that? Were you Was that surprising or was it not as bad as you thought? No, it was a bit surprising because every time I travel, every time I travel, I'm a guy who walks around with 94, 95 kilos. Imagine that, right? So when yeah. I arrived in New Zealand, guess how many kilos I had? Mm, were you heavy due to it because you're retaining water? Yeah, bro. Yeah, what were you, 99? No, nah, I was 97, almost 98 kilos. Damn, okay, so you had a lot to cut, man. Five kilos is 10 pound cut. Unexpected, ah. too. Yeah, unexpected, yes. But uh, once you once you, you know your homework, you're able to traverse certain things a bit easy. For example, when I reached New Zealand, what I did was I get the solid meal, I went check out the the arena, say hi to who know me, and so forth. One of the three main persons I always greet is the executives of the IPF. I always pay my respects and stuff. 
they acknowledge me, I, I acknowledge them. I and that I go check my weight. I literally weigh almost 98 kilos. So I run and have 98 kilos. I say, here's what. Time for me to shake some weight. So what I did, I put on my my tracksuit, put on an extra t-shirt, and put on my a sweater. I went to the gym. No extreme cardio. All I did was uh, put it on incline and I start pumping some Rocky Balboa. I'm a very 100% Rocky fan. So I was uh, in, what you could say, full eye of the tiger, buddy. You you kind of are like a Rocky in this though, aren't you? Like you, no, well, everyone else is, everyone's training on kilo plates. Everybody's coming from these powerhouse nations and powerlifting and they have these massive social media followings and everyone sees them coming. And here you come, the underdog, training on whatever gym equipment you got. You know, you just got straight up pound plates, uncalibrated, doing your thing. And you got yep. an opportunity to make a statement. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, uh, again, I'm looking forward for not just to set uh, a bar for myself, uh, but I'm looking forward to set uh, that, uh, what we could say, that main point that uh, everybody always look down to lesser nations and they say, oh, nah, they don't have anything much or whatever. So I'm, I want to be that guy that's like, yo, I came from nothing. I walked my butt off. I'm here. I don't have what you guys have. I got to do a 10 hours. I got to do a 12 hours. Sometimes I do a 16 hours. I'm a certified crane operator. So now I'm a lifting coordinator. So I got to be on the ball, up rolling. When it comes to lifting and coordination, I'm there. So that's within machines now. So I got to be lifting weights for myself. So when I come out of a strict shift or whatever, I see some people posting up after a, a grind day at work uh, and so forth. I was like, yo, come sit in the machine and talk to me different. But again, you, everyone has... Yeah, finish. That's your work day? You do yeah, work sometimes. days that long and then go train afterwards? Yes, sir. Holy smokes, man. Yeah. This this is a rocky story. No, I'm well, telling you. I'm telling you straight. That if anything, I could even call my manager. I could even call my coach. And even my... Out of half right now. These people can tell you. I'm not joking around. Mm. Sometimes I got to work two, three shifts one time. The supervisors are different. Oh, Carlos, you the coordinator. Sets up. All right, good. Cool. No problem. I, I have some time. I have two, three crane operators working with me. I have to be up all night. Don't ask. Coffee is up to here, buddy. Coffee is up to here. Mm. So when I hear some people, for example... Within the 93s, they had this, they had that. I was like, yo, you guys got it fucking good. I have shit weights. For example, when I walk in the gym and my eyes are a bit sore, I don't care. One thing the, the gym gives me respect for, the gym could be ram pack, ram pack. And soon as they see me, it's like, oh shit, strong man, just come back. Hey, strong man, what are you doing today? I was like, I'm squatting. It's like, all right, cool, no problem. Literally, they will. Who's Rev is working? Yeah, you got two more sets, right? Then all of a sudden, like, yo, uh, the rock is yours, man. So within that time, I go, I walk, I stop, I start shopping. I will shop seven for the five plates on each side. There's 14. You know mm. me? Good. That's mm. a regular day. Well, I got 25, 25, 10, 5, 2.5. Well, set out my routine, start squatting, doing my stuff, everything. I'm going to call one or two other athletes or I'm going to call uh, the guys from right in the gym to spot me or even to video me and so forth. Sometimes, uh, even though I'm fully exhausted, I get an XL, which is uh, an energy drink. Sometimes I get a monster. Uh, I kill, kick it up with a bit of a coffee or even one animal pack and I'm good to go. When I finish with that, no, I'll be sleeping like a baby. <laughs> yeah. And and the people around you, are they like all rallying and supporting you and recognizing what you could do for powerlifting? Are, have people taken notice now that you're invited to Sheffield and you did what you did at the World Championships? I won't say all of them. Some are rooting for me. Some not. Some is like, oh, Carlos is getting there. And, you know, they always have like, he always for himself. I got to be myself first, buddy. I got to put myself first. If I don't put myself first, trust me, 
Just another person of the cup, clip my wings and say, hey, well, new fresh kid on the block. And when you watched Sheffield last year, what was your impression? Were you impressed by the lifters? And then we'll talk about the actual event. But what was your impression of the 93s? Two of the 93s in which I, I look I look at the top five 93s worldwide. Now I look at the full top 10. I'm nowhere close to these guys when it comes to bench press. Okay? I'm nowhere close. But when it comes to squat and dead, there's two guys that did not even come close to the top five. I said, what the hell, man? But again, someday there's good days, there's bad days. Every day the sun shines, but not every day it rains. Mm. You could get a cloudy day, you could get a, 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 a moody day. You could get all, all types of days once the sun is shining. But the beauty part about it, you got to make it worthwhile. I believe Amar had a, a groin injury, and, uh, and I believe his sciatica start acting. And then you have uh, Emil also was chasing uh, for the bench press. I don't know if he pulled his, uh, his low um, leviator muscles, but all of a sudden I see he was shaking his, uh, his shoulders. I was like, these guys are injured and coming to a big meet. But again... They come first. I'm still on the dog from a distance. I look, I watch, I learn. So now it's my turn. I got to set the, the pace on a different level. And how did you feel about the showmanship and the the actual event itself? You got guys like Gavin Eden hit that squat, reach out towards the crowd and, and start flexing in the crowd. Just 2,000 people go crazy. What were your thoughts when you're watching this? Uh, the showmanship is there. Showmanship is there, right? Sportmanship is not. You know what I mean? Sportmanship is not. In, the sportmanship might be within the U.S. team. But how many athletes you will see, for example, like yourself, you will go and greet almost every single athlete, right? You won't see... Athletes will go and meet athletes, uh, have a one-on-one -on, -one on them and so forth. Say, man, oh, they, I love this, I love that. Oh, how can we this and how can we this? Uh, uh, tell me something, give me a pointer on how I can better my bench press and so forth. You don't find that much in powerlifting, I can tell you straight. But if you go to strongman, you find it. You have that mm -hmm. camaraderie, you have that sportsmanship. But honestly, in, in powerlifting, you don't find that much. Nope, Sorry. Really, you feel like there's like um, an elite level and they don't reach down to help people on the way up. I will say yes to that because everybody, for example, there's a fresh kid on the block. For, as I mentioned before, we are top gunners right now. Sadly, they're, they're going to have a new kid come brush all of us. Then all of a sudden, we want to know this kid. We want to know how his life works, how this, how that. Good. At least every single athlete, this is what I will do. If I'm a top rank athlete in which I am a day like today, I become world champion. And I know within the top 10, there's uh, some few athletes that hey, is getting a struggle in any way. I can set out something and say, like, yo, I'm willing to give you a extra hand. Okay? Again, <clears throat> excuse me. It's the same way that Apollo give Ram, um, Rocky, that title shot twice. Who gets such a marvelous classic in two balls with one? No way. Once in a lifetime. So there's something good behind you that this fella is willing to give you that extra hand. Good. To clarify that and also to emphasize it also. When I had made it uh, in the top six in the world, there's few people who was backing me online and so forth, Carlos, man, I think you should do this, I think you should do that, give me pointers and stuff. But afterwards, there's roughly about uh, 10 to roughly 15 different coaches want to coach me all of a sudden. I was like, where the hell are you guys were? Whoa, really? That's like, right. Oh, yeah. You, are, you guys want to have a piece of me now. When I was seeking help, asking for what's up, that's that. you guys are like, oh, you got to pay this. You gotta, I don't have a problem. But the point is, why is it you want to help me now? Because well, I reached the top. 
I will reach the top yet, much as when I start creaming the top and polishing it. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to set out to everyone all day. Don't wait till someone come knocking at your door to see what's happening or what's wrong. Start very fine. Start asking because you don't know which day one of those same persons is going to come and ask you or even give you that extra helping hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, so, that's the ugly part about the sport. Did you previously reach out to some of these coaches and they didn't give you help? Quite a few, my brother. Quite a few. Quite a ah. few. Quite a few. I don't want to call names, but uh, I know for sure they will be seeing this here. And trust me, even former world champions, I reach out to. You know what they turn and tell me? Sorry, X and Y and Z. It's like, okay, no problem. So, not like I want to be envious or whatever. The same, the same words they tell me or they have told me is the same words I'll be giving them. Trust me. And I can will leave your hand in mid-air waiting for to shake my hand or whatever. But just the same words you told me is the same words I'll be telling you. Sorry to say. Mm. So yeah, there's a you, background. You, there's yeah. a background story here. Yep. I don't want to call names because a lot of people will start pointing fingers. And I, again, I don't give a damn about it. Gotcha. And so this kind of helps put some gas in the tank for you. This kind of helps right. give you some motivation to be like, okay, all right. I see my pathway. I know what I got to do. And, yes. 100. And, Sheffield, and Sheffield, all the athletes, all the coaches, they're all there. They're all watching. And this is your opportunity to be like, now, just like Rocky, now I show you I belong. I just yes. want to show everybody I, I deserve to be here. Yeah. Trust me, my brother. It's it very, what we could say... It's like, it's like a needle in a hair stuck when you find it, right? And the, the time that you took to go through fine by fine, fine, and piece by piece, no one knows the broken glass is left behind you. Everybody sees what's shining up, upstairs. You know what I mean? I'm not perfect. No one is. The beauty part about it, I keep putting in my work. I keep thriving. I keep grinding. Today, tomorrow, I made it. Trust me are able to look left, look right, and even look around me. Because without motivation, we won't be able to keep climbing. Without consistency, we won't be able to keep putting in the work. But above all, without time and discipline, there is no success. When you, when you look at these 93s, is it at all, is it intimidating when you see the numbers they did at Sheffield Net Worlds? How would you categorize it when you're assessing what you see? Or is it not intimidating at all? It's um, How do you assess them? The only thing that intimidates me is bench press. There's the only thing. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. There's the only thing. I was like, I understand there's some big, strong dudes benching beyond 450 pounds. I was like, what the hell these guys are eating, man? No, well, there's 393s in 500 clubs. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, it's crazy, man. That's it's, the only it's... thing that intimidates me. That squat and deadlift is like, yo, uh -uh. I know you have tremendous legs. We got to talk at a different level now. Wind it down slowly, 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 <laughs> slowly. Yeah, yeah. Do you think now these other 93s are overlooking you and some of these 93s like previously that weren't answering the DMs or whatever, do you think they're overlooking you now and they're only looking at each other or do you think now they're starting to understand? I believe uh, a little bit of everything. Especially the top three. Mr. Gavin, Jonathan Kaiko, and also Gavin Hundler. Uh, Gustav Hanlon. Gavin has been trailing the record for the past four years now. I believe five by now. Uh, Kaiko, a marvelous bencher. However, his best squat was back in 2018, 2019. And from then to now, he hasn't squat those numbers. So I keep everybody in check. Gavin, he has a, a depth problem. 
in which uh, when it comes to his muscle memory gains, uh, he tends not to focus on that, in which I've mentioned before. He has a plateau. And I, I believe he, he picks before time. Gavin, uh, Gustav, marvelous bencher, marvelous uh, deadlifter. But when it comes to his squat, he's, he has a little tweak. So, again, as you see uh, there, Amara, you have uh, a great squatter, great upper body, midsection quite a bit uh, off because uh, he tends to focus on two lifts and not just all three. His, because his, his deadlift is not that great. And then you have Emil Krastev, a next power bencher. He doesn't focus that much on his squat. He focuses on his bench in which he, he want to achieve that. And then he has a quite of a kick when it comes to his deadlift. So I look for it. A next guy who's coming quite a bit sharp in which no one really discusses about him is Sasha. Sasha is an incredible lifter. Yeah. And if we as 93s don't look at that, trust me, Sasha going to come from out to the blues. And like just like how Mitchell came out to the blues and sweep everyone up. Just like that, Sasha gonna it's going to happen to Sasha. Because his bench is marvelous. His deadlift is insane. And the only tweak that he has is his quad. And if he wrecks the fire his quad, I'm in deep trouble too as a 93. So trust me, he's not a walk in the park for any. So you're a student. You you study these guys. You know all their numbers. I heard you on the Sabato Sessions podcast. You knew all their numbers. You've studied them. You know what to expect. You even know like temp selections, what they kind of do. Like you would mention oh. Gavin, who's been chasing that world record and, and has had difficulty hitting that squat depth. Do you kind of think you know what to expect from these guys due to how you've studied them? Yes. Kaiko going to break the bench once again. I'm nowhere close to Kaiko. I'm nowhere close. 234, 235, 240, 245 kilo. Damn, what you go? What you eating, boy? <laughs> yeah. On the flip side, though, um, in the total, you go over 900. None of them have gone over 900. So you are right there. And I want to ask you as well. Obviously, you and Gavin are going to be fighting for that squat world record. Does it matter to you at all what Gavin's placing? Are you looking at building your total? Or because he's forever in pursuit of that squat world record. And he might go for it on his second. He said he would, but we'll see what happens the day of. Are you going to chase him, fight for that record? Or are you like, my man, you do whatever you're going to do. I'm going for the total. My brother, I'll say this and I'll say it again. Whosoever comes, I welcome. Whosoever goes, I welcome. The beauty part about it, the game is SBD. You get me? One thing I'll say though. Yes, there's going to be a battle of between myself and Gavin. But the beauty part with Gavin now, he has to humble himself a bit more. That's uh, that, that reaction that he has. <sighs> I was once there, buddy. I still am, but here's what. I prefer sit, overlook, analyze, observe. And then here's what. All right. This is your tweak. This is my tweak. All right. Time to close off the shop and show with the keys. Simple. I overheard that he's willing to jump his second at 335. My brother, don't jump while I'm right up your ass. <laughs> It's, do you think his his style and approach to attempt selection, I mean, he's so make or break. If he goes all three squats, he'll be super far ahead. But if he overshoots and misses, yeah. he's super far back. But it's so you, do you, are, you are the kind of guy who loves you to talk to after a very long time. You're not powerlifting. You study this stuff. But so oh. that exactly know what's up. Right, so... Yeah. As to what you say, well, I'm going to look at the top fives right now. I'm not talking, I'm not going to start with me. I'm going to start with uh, Hanlon, Gustav. His approach is great. I love it. I respect it. Okay. His plateau is uh, 325 kilo. He never runs past that. He's never put up, let's say, a 
a 327 or even a 326. So West Ham, we never know, but I can tell you for sure, he, he's not going to squat world record. He's going to look to run off that total and make it even 890, 895, or even, you never know, 900. Good. Kaiko is not running for no squat record. No, no. Eh, eh. Mm -mm. Hell no. Kaiko best squat was 307.5 kilo and those years ago. And one of his best was 310. I can't remember. I can't recall when last he squatted the 310. And that's from 2019 to now. Right. Good. His bench is being increasingly almost every world meet by 0 0.5, 2 0.5 kilos. And he's going to keep that because he, he don't want to scrape his tongue. He's a very smart fellow. His deadlift is reached at the plateau and he want to maintain those numbers. He want to maintain solid numbers. And I I love his persuasion and I love his uh, attitude towards it because you got the 300 squat. You get me? And let's say you have a 305 squat. You have a 245 bench and you have a 350 dead. Yo, you're unmatchable right now because of your bench press. But imagine if you get a 330 squat. <laughs> Be incredible, right? But he's not focusing on that. So he focuses on maintaining his world stat, the greatest bencher, and also maintaining his total. So he's he's chipping, he's chipping slowly because he, he don't have no one on his back. But again, bench press doesn't win a world a world class championship. Good. And then you come down to what you could say, you have uh, Amar, then you have Emil, and then you have the big two right now is Bill Sensation. You have Gavin, then you have myself. Well, I could tell you a bit about Gavin. I, I, I look at him, I what's up. He has his own, what we could say, his own triumph and so forth. And also you have his own egos. And I tell you this, uh, to my analyzation, many others have seen it. Well, you don't set out because you want to set out. Yes, you have a great motivational speech and so forth, but you got to know exactly how you're picking and choosing certain things, bro. Open numbers could be suddenly in between or just above. Just above, for example, let's say your best is 325, open with at least 315, 310 kilos, with just a solid number. Then. Okay? And then you go to your third best in the gym. The third best in the gym. This is what I do. You get me? Don't go to your best, very best in the gym. Yeah? Go. These guys train with kilo plates. I don't train with kilo plates. I train volume plates all the time. I know exactly what I'll be sitting down with. So, I won't be scraping the tank. One thing I'll say for sure, a six pack. I'll tell you this here. I open first, I'm going to put anyone within the 93 on the back burner. You get me? Yeah. Well, whosoever comes second, I will respond. Remember, I came first, right? Well, remember, when you weigh heavy, for example, let's say a guy opens with 320. No one is opening with 320. He has a, a very big work, right? Good. But for a guy who, who opened in with 300, 305, or even 310, which is above the 320, he has a much more room on how he could be able to improve on his lips or on his calls. So let's say someone opened with 320. Yes, he's good. He's standing good. But let's say the guy who opens with 310 goal breaks the world record just by a 2.5. You get me? Look. Yeah. The guy who's below, he got to be confident enough that, hey, well, I'm going to go put 335, 15 kilos above that. Right? Good. You don't know if that guy who just broke the record has a lot more in the tank and he's just playing with you to see what you got. This is worrying. <laughs> yeah. that's, where, that's where the science comes in. You know what I mean? Thank God now I have a coach who studied the games too. So, trust me, I'm not jumping while I'm not flexing well. Again, I'm looking for a decent, decent total in which a lot of people turn and say, Carlos, if you go for 900 kilos first, bro, what the fuck you eating? I was like, yo, I'm working, buddy, I'm working. 
and, and these aren't just wild numbers you're throwing out there. This is what your training is pacing. And again, what some people got to keep in mind, if you got your third squat and third deadlift at Worlds, you would have been just below 870. They're looking at the total, and but strength-wise, it your total from Worlds might be lower than what your strength might have been. So they're thinking your total at Worlds was your cap. That was your max. But it might have been somewhere else in between. You know what I mean? It might have been, who knows where it might have been if you just shaved off a couple kilos on those third attempts. So it's not always like people think. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, for my uh, for my deadlift, I had a 365. But my sciatica started pulling a bit. So I told him, say, hey, well, leave it raw, leave it alone. And honestly, 365 is what I do for two, three reps now. That's, that's insane. So, no, honestly. And I, do, I, I have done 365 in, uh, back then, last year, before wars. I did it for two reps. I could even send you a video. Yeah. Could you actually, can I repost these? Nah, uh, I don't do top, top, top lips. I don't be like no. the big boys. Look, I'm doing 730. I'm doing 735. And uh, I'm doing um 370 for three. No, I don't. I don't post those. You see, I'm training. I'm pulling up numbers. Just be careful. Just be careful. It's not my top set. <laughs> wow. Good. It's not so, my top set. So you, well, okay. So could I post a 365? It's if it's not your top set. <laughs> Let's do Six this. Pack. Six pack. Let's make it spicy. Let's make it spicy. Let's get everybody talking. I'm going to think about it. One week out of the Sheffield, you want to see a top of clock. I'm going to send you it. You're going to you're gonna inbox me your number via WhatsApp, and I'm going to send you it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So if you're doing that kind of numbers on deadlifts, yeah, you're, over 900 would be there for you. And you would – I heard you've been improving your things. bench press as well. Yes, my bench press is one of my weakest, but uh, I'm getting there slowly, buddy. <laughs> I'm getting there slowly. I want to say this. My finals is the top uh the top six or the top eight openers. Imagine that. I'm not close to these guys yet. Yeah. If I bench 200 kilos, it's over for every single 93 because there's no one holding me back. No one. And um so after this is all said and done. Who do you think is going to be what everybody's talking about after Sheffield? When when Monday rolls around and everybody goes back to work and they're all talking about Sheffield, what are they talking about? They were talking about the top five guys and especially those who came from nowhere to something. I would be one of those guys on everyone's sensation. But Sheffield doesn't stop everything. While some people will go on a vacation, take a week off uh, and those stuff, enjoy the little wins, three months after, worlds. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I'm glad you brought that up. How do you feel about some of the Americans crossing over from USAPL to the IPF like none other than Brendan Petrie, who's a phenomenal lifter himself? Have have you been paying much attention to that or you weren't paying attention until he's actually over here? (laughs) I follow as much as possible, but one of the main reasons uh, a lot of athletes are moving over now is because uh, they see, I will say it straight, now they see where IPF is going and where SBD want to carry the sport. I I love and respect what the USA PL or what the USA franchise has done to elevate and even help the athletes, uh, not just to market themselves, but to become much more competitive and so forth. I'll tell you this here. It's 50-50 when it comes uh, to the pro leagues. Because you have tested and you have untested. So it's 50-50. Mm-hmm. The beauty part about it, now uh, almost every single athlete is like, oh, I'm going over back to the IPF. The IPF has a one main rule stipulation. Once you compete pro league, you got to face a 12 months ban or 12 months suspension once you return it. And then you have to Test part, um, test before you return. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the main criteria to return to the IPF, in which we all know what's going on. 
Whether you be on it or you're not being on it, you chew, you're chewing gum, so you don't chewing gum, so it is what it is. So I welcome again, as what you symbols say. You want to go, go and do it? Fine, feel free. But remember, when it comes here, we are fighting for the main big check. And you were actually saying uh, before we started recording, you got you just you got water tested, you got blood tested, Heiko got blood tested, Jesus has been blood tested. I'm well, I can show I you my papers Gavin right post. now, buddy. What's that? I can show you my papers if if you think I'm lying. That's right. So I, I'm glad you're talking about this and how you are in the water program. You get blood tested the whole nine because. People always say about somebody who's from outside their circle, immediately, he's on steroids. That's how people talk. Yeah. You know, it. why do you think that is? I don't know when it comes to potential or everybody want to be in the limelight or so. I don't want to reiterate much because a lot of people when they're pointing fingers and so forth. But watching Rocky itself from one to one to six, but one of the best Rockies that I stand and even now is Rocky Four. Yeah, Rocky Four. It shows uh, that literally outsiders are on drugs, enhancers, hardcore enhancers. Whether you have the best training facility or whatever, you're on hardcore drugs. So whether they are on it or they're not, it, it will always uh, remain like that. But uh, if you as an athlete know to your 100% certain to yourself and you're not being injecting your shit, you're not taking pills or stuff, and you're putting up those numbers, you're training your butt off, there's no one else in the face of the earth could come and point fingers at you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Honestly speaking. And, and is this like an opportunity for you because you are in the water program and you've been leading into this, you got blood tested and piss tested. So they have it. And then after at the meet, they're going to do it again. So you could be like, good there. We could shut the door on this. Not shut the door. You shut it in the door after three, uh, after six weeks, you're going to shut the door. And that. <laughs> it doesn't go just like that. Yeah. Yeah, and you had said on the Sabato podcast, you're like, anybody wants to see my water profile, go ahead. Uh, I I got I got it I got it all. You have the receipts for for all your testing. Yes, sir. Not just receipts. I have the emails too. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. So that'll close the book on that one. Um, and going at Sheffield, who are you interested in watching? Like as a fan, are you interested in watching any as as a fan? Because this is a massive event. Everyone out there is fans whether we like it or not. One thing I would love to interact with all the athletes, especially the male athletes, ourselves. Even though we are a bit egoistic, we have our own time, we are in a game zone or so. I call it Peterson Griffith and I'll say it proudly. I will shake everyone's hand and say, my brother, it's been an honor, it's been a pleasure. Let's go and get it. For those who don't want to find by me, at the end of the day, we're all athletes. It's not like you're a robot and I'm human. Mm. That's the ugly part. And I think we should all, all say, here's why. When we go out there, we want to break a record. We want to set something. We should support each other because we don't know who else is going to come and set that, not just for us, but for themselves. That's the, that's one of the main things I, I would love to see. Honestly speaking, they got, they got a lot of silent killers out there or whatever, but come on, man. It's not, you're not going to war. Where are you going to war on, on seven totals? But at the end of the day, we are humans, buddy. Cheer one another, support one another. That because we USA, New Zealand, Guyana, Canada, and other countries, bro. Damn, come on. You so do you feel like, or, or do you enjoy the <laughs> fact that there is showmanship like there is at Sheffield? Do you see yourself leaning into that side where you're, you know, you've seen some of the other lifters at Sheffield do that? 
my showmanship remains one and classic. One and classic. And they're going to remain there from since uh, 2018 to now. You've seen it. You saw that that was. And you're going to see the same me. You're not going to see me jumping up, posing, and all kind of crazy buying the crowd. Yeah, I love to buy the crowd. But here's what. My weights come first. And then we're going to buy the crowd later. Mm. I love the hype. Mm. I love the But sportsmanship uh, is paramount. And and do you think you're going to be ready for that kind of atmosphere? Because some people were saying when they got the Sheffield, they were shocked. Some people were in the back room and they were trying to adjust one of the televisions because it was too loud. And the television, they, it, they're they trying to warm up and concentrate. And the roaring of the crowd and everything on the TV was just like distracting. So I think it was Eric Helms walked up and he's like, let me turn this freaking thing down because this is, this is crazy loud right now. And he realized... The volume was off. That was the crowd through the walls, several walls, and they were in a basement. And he's like, holy shit, we could hear that in the basement. And then when they walked up and they were actually at the, the stage, they could feel the crowds start chanting like, Jesus. and it reverberates in their chest. And they're like, like nothing they'd experienced. Um, have you thought about this? Do you do any kind of mental prep for these kind of things? Because you're, you've been at this for a while, but you've leveled up very quickly. You've been powerlifting yeah. for years, but the level has been bang, boom, and you're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have uh, you thought about that? Do you mental prep? My mental prep is still uh, what we could say buzzes me off because even at the local meeting, I still be what we could say. The, uh, getting the butterflies, uh, the moths, uh, everything starts uh, grumbling for me. But the vibe, the atmosphere, I can say one thing for sure. Due to strongman, in which uh, everybody supports one another, the crowd goes wild when they see crazy stuff. Uh, recently, last year, I uh, had a return champion for Aruba Strongest Man. And everyone was like, nah. Because, sorry, now I was in lead, right? And I was in third, sitting third for the first two days. And on the last day, everybody's like, this is it. Do or die. So, sorry, now I was quite confident that he's going to win the title. But the beauty part about it, now I know sorry, now I'm weakness. They don't do conditioning. So we had mm. a, a deadly medley. The deadly medley consists of uh, Dumbbell, circle dumbbell, 50 kilo, and then 45 kilo single press. From that, you have uh, the yoke carry. That's two. From yoke carry, you have uh, hustle full stone, 85, 90 kilo carry. From that, you have a run back and you have farmer's carry, 185, almost uh, 200 pounds in each hand. And then you have uh, Sandbag, a 285 pound sandbag. <laughs> so everybody's like, shit, this shit is pissed. So I know exactly that's how I train. And the, the you have to do it in less than a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah. So imagine this here, huh? the top three you have Guyana, Aruba, Suriname. Aruba went. Uh, Aruba set the pace at one minute and uh, let's say a minute and twelve, a minute and ten seconds, roughly. I went, uh, set it at fifty-eight seconds. Oh my god! Yeah, I already put myself second now in front of Aruba, and I'm waiting for Suriname to respond. So now I'm gonna beat me, even though he finished the obstacle course. He gotta beat my timing. So Suriname got second or third in the event. He got he got a minute and change because Sandbag is his ugliest nightmare ever. <laughs> <laughs> but so besides that, now the crowd is impeccable. Like, yes, everybody is going crazy. So after I took the lead now, just by one point, just by one point. We have Atlas Stones for the last 
an Atlas stone starts from roughly 65, 70 kilos and go all the way up to 150 kilos. Oh my god, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's so huge. so in uh, so scrapes it and set the set the bar at roughly 48 to 50 seconds. Right? Aruba sets it at 37, 38 seconds. Guess how many seconds I set it at? To retain my title. 36. Nah. Come come back. You got two more chances. 35. Nope. Last chance. 33? Nope. I give you a golden buzzer. Let me see it. <laughs> I don't, did you get in the 20s? Yes, sir. 28 oh, seconds. Oh, damn. Yep. So Every you... single one was like, nah, that guy is on drugs. Gotta be on drugs. Trust me. Ever since then. Yep. So you've been tested. You've been you've been with the big crowds. You've been with the whole like more than just powerlifting, essentially. Not as not as big as Sheffield, but Sheffield is gonna set the part in a different level. Right. Right, right, right. Got you. How did you find powerlifting? How big is powerlifting in, in Guyana? Powerlifting here in Guyana is not as big uh, as uh, within the U.S. or is not as big uh, as uh, the U.K. or any other high-level high country. For here in Guyana, I'm proud to say it, we have novices. They're coming up on my birthday, the 18th of February. That's novices. Three months or two months uh, and a half after that, then we're going to have intermediates. And then on, uh, sometime in August, we're going to have our nationals. And then from our nationals, sometime in late November or early December, we're going to have senior nationals. So there's only four championships we get. Other than that, mm. only two I look forward to compete at. Uh, and now there's only one I look forward to compete at because a lot of lifters are like, oh, Carlos, every time you compete, you're just putting people on the back burner. And I was like, well, you got to work your butt off to get where I am a day like today. Simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how did you find powerlifting? Powerlifting is uh, it's not just uh, a, a sport. It keeps you in check. It keeps you in power. As I mentioned before, if you squat, uh, let's say, 300 kilo and you missed it, they go tamper with you 100%. They're like, hell no, I got to get that shit. So you go on it, you repeat, you repeat, you repeat, you fail, you fail, you fail until all of a sudden your body gets accustomed to that stuff and you all of a sudden you start repping it. And there's where persistence comes in, okay? Perseverance, everything enhances your, ma your body, your mind, everything. And you said in that SPD video, were you working young at a young age and you got a, a drastic injury um, that you thought was going to stop you from even just normally functioning, let alone being an athlete in any kind of sport. And then from there, you started building towards strength training to rebuild your body and the strength started coming on, muscle mass started coming on. Yep. So to flash back a bit uh, on that part uh, for me, I was a stevedore. Stevedore is a person who works uh, on the docks just like Rocky again. So <clears throat> with the beauty with me and Rocky now, I uh, was a poor, one of the persons working on the vessel. Okay? We discharge containers or we offload containers. And either containers, or cargo, uh bulk cargo, free cargo, you name it, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, sometime if it's not lugs, you have to work fertilizer, if it's not fertilizer, you have to pack sugar, if you have to pack sugar, you have to offload rice, and so forth. So, uh, working as a stevedore at a very young age, it wasn't that easy, but it uh, opens your mind to be much more, what we could say, aware of your surroundings and stuff, because I'm John Fernandez, okay, you have a uh, you have cranes moving. You have forklifts going. Sometimes you have heavy duty trucks going. Then you have uh, uh, truck and trailers. 
you have uh, stockers. Stockers are machines that stock in containers. Sometimes you have uh, other heavy duty vehicles being discharged or being offloaded from alpha vessels. And there's a bunch of work uh, going on at one time. So um, the day that uh, I fell in the container was we were stuffing rice. So there's a 20 foot container. We stand it up. Okay. So the 20 foot door is going to be on top. We got to climb. Okay. We open. I, I was very agile, very flexible till now. And we go up there. Now we always racing to see who's going to stop the most containers before the morning is out. I was already at 17 containers in total. We stuff in the last one and the container was already halfway. They couldn't operate to bring up the bags and stuff. So one of the bags was leaking rice. Okay, it was white rice, white broken rice to export. So I reached to the bag, cut it, make sure it out. The one next door was like a bunch, okay? And when it came over, it popped. So the one, the bag right next to it, one of the straps went out. All you hear is pox pass, man down. I couldn't jump overboard. Yo, container tech one. So with that now, this here, this here looks like a bullet hole. Let me show you what's up. See? Oh, wow. Oh, that is, holy smokes, Carlos. That yeah. is like a bullet hole in your leg. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people, even the uh, the people from New Zealand ask me, yo, did you get shot there? Nah, this is part of my injury. And th this here was uh, a little more bigger. And on the day of the injury, as you could see, there's still trace of the wood that passed through here. Three of my fingers and a little bit of my um baby finger could have fit in there comfortable oh my god carlos that would have been a massive gash in your leg for anyone listening Good. the scar to this day is massive but he's oh, no, showing how big it, 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 was it's no, it looked like a bullet hole trust me a, a lot of people even at um if you look back at some of my videos um at walls uh, and even before walls Everybody asks me, "What? Well, like that guy is taking stuff or something?" <laughs> and there's one here, and then you have this one here. This one here. That's that is so close on your thigh. You have so many major arteries in your legs and thighs. You could have easily died, and that that is bigger than a bullet hole. That is like a shotgun. Ah, <laughs> ah, my brother. So there's one of it, and. Besides a dislocated pelvis and a fractured scapula, I don't know if, that's, um, if that were my main weakness to, to make my bench press uh, weak or so, but uh, I'm getting there slowly. And I was hospitalized from August 29, 2013 to roughly about uh, uh, about three months or so. And December 12, 2013, I returned to work John Fernandez doing light work. That's what Alan Fernandez, my immediate boss, was. Told me, I'm going to do light work uh, and stuff. A week after, he had wanted me to start forklift training. I was like, forklift training now? So I was, since then, bold. I won't say arrogant, but uh, I set my table straight. I was already a senior guy on the waterfront. And I told him, I was like, due respect. Many people... Many operators and many personnel came after me. They passed through my hand. They're operators now. Now, because I fall in a container, everything go a little bit off of me. You want to give me five work now? Hey, well, you will keep it and continue working on the ground. You hear me? I wasn't sorry if I create an operator yet. I wasn't no clo way close to getting my first certification. Okay, in rigging and lifting. You get me? Well, mm. so <laughs> within that time now, January 12th, 2014, around that same time, I started gym. Within that same year, Repsol started engaging uh, programs uh, towards rigging, lifting, for sale, 
and all the four. I was already an emergency response uh, person to John Fernandez Limited. That's on the workforce. So I have uh, many certificates in for said up to level three of the elect today. Within that now, get uh, certain things going and so forth. I don't have uh, a professional degree like uh, some of the athletes uh, or so forth, but I have certificates that are most every three, four years I gotta be renewing. For example, my crane certificate, uh, my uh, uh, Siemens program and so forth. I can almost go and work almost everywhere, anywhere, once I want to, or if I want to. So I started training, double training, got to pass my course become senior banksman and so forth. And within three, four weeks, uh, I had to go through the grind. I had to wear like a, like a heavy duty belt. My sister um, torn her fingers, uh, prepping that stuff and thing. And honestly, my brother, is, it was quite uh, painful, honestly speaking. But one thing I set out, when I heal from this here, there is nothing else Gonna come and crumble my cookie. And I set out straight. That's the determination that I have. And besides that, anything I set my hands on and anything my mind is set to, to achieve, I set out to be one of the best. I resigned from John Fernandez as a senior warfront worker. I returned in. Uh, I returned there during COVID times. Got through, well, I already had my certificates and stuff. Alan Fernandez told me, I don't know you as a crane operator. I say, yeah, but that doesn't mean when I leave one way, I will, I will continue one way. No, I elevate. So he's like, all right, cool. You're going to go, um, and you're going to go in the far cliffs and see what's up. Even though training was a bit off, still, as you able to, I had to find time, get away and stuff to put in some extra because COVID got almost everybody in a refrain. So, to the point though, in 2014, I started off bodybuilding with my first uh, three, four weeks. They had a, they had a poster showing in Body Max Gym. So, everybody's like, they saw my belt, uh, I was a uh, chisel. But I didn't, I didn't have the size what I have now. So everybody's like, hey, Carlos is going through the stage, boy. A buck man going up. <laughs> so I was like, nah, man, I'm not interested in that yet. So everybody was like, ah, oh, you should take it up. So I, I, buy, I buy the bait and end up going. When I end up going up now, become a laughing stock or whatever. But this is what it is. Within uh, 2014 now, I reached out to a friend of, uh, well, he wasn't my friend then, but he was very well known in the country, Randolph Morgan, former powerlifter, top-ranked powerlifter for Guyana. He, I, I reached out to him, I told him, tell him what's up, he's like, all right, cool, no problem, come true. So I met him, he told him, I said, all right, let me see what you got. We went to bodies, I, caught, I started training at bodies full-time, see what's up, but not really full-time because I had to finish work first. And then go to train. But I was training with Morgan 100. So Morgan showed me the ropes of powerlifting. See what's up. That's around 2014. Then start off lifting until 2016. I continued training as a bodybuilder. With the little knowledge with Morgan have left me. I just become more powerful. I already started pulling 500, 600 pounds for 4 or 5 reps. And I was... Literally a rookie, but if I had gotten the right mentorship, just like how many athletes in the U.S. get that breakthrough, trust me, I would have been far ahead or even become former world champion. But who knows, knows, right? So I set out that path. Uh, 2016, I was like, flip bodybuilding. I was in and out of bodybuilding. So 2016, I started off the rampage right here in Guyana. Novices won it. Overall best lifter. Intermediates won it. Start breaking some junior records and open records. Set off uh, Raw Nationals. Raw Nationals break my own squat record, break my own deadlift record. Set off a new total. 
challenge the open now. So a lot of senior lifters is like a fresh girl on the block. Don't worry, dealing with big boys now. Pick this. I say, all right, yeah, I think it's joke. I make it. All right, good. Share some licks December. Qualify for 2017 NAPF. My very first championship with Mitchell Chance and Walter Carriazzo. Epic battle. Wow, that was my very wow. first. Yeah. Mitchell Chance beat me by three kilos. Three kilos yeah, boy beat me by. And Walter's Canadian. I'm familiar with him too. The yes, Canadian Walter champ. Carriazzo. That same year, Walter Carriaz, I believe that same year, the following year, Walter went to Wars and he got seventh or eighth. He got his ass whooped. Yeah, one of the, um, besides I continue training, Morgan had uh, migrated from Guyana and gone to live in Puerto Rico or Ecuador. He only visited Guyana once or twice. There's when I had already won uh, two international titles. My first will be Mexico. I went to Mexico literally looking for Chance, but Chance, uh, he wasn't um, partaking in that one. 2019, got suspended internally from my federation because I told and tell the federation exactly what's up. You guys aren't feeding me. Um, you're not clothing me. You're not giving me a stipend for performing this well or whatever. So I told and say, here's what. This is what it is. I went, I competed in Barbados, a strong man, and competed powerlifting. Well, powerlifting was uh, on sanction, so I faced the full 12 months. I was like, all right, no problem. But don't ask. That year was eye of the tiger for me. I was number two strongman in Guyana. And Julio Sinclair, my countryman, he was number one. We set out, uh, we see what's up uh, and things. So I was like, this is a different ball game. So Big John... At that time, he was my coach, Big John Edwards, another top rank athlete for Guyana, one of the most decorated also. Uh, put me through the training and stuff. He said, okay, hey, well, put powerlifting on pause. Let me focus on something different. And my strongman training got from, what we could say, 50, 60% to incredible gains. So a lot of people like, nah, Carlos got to be on drugs. No, oh, I'm not on drugs. Just that when people tell me, or even when people don't me, I use that as extra fuel, my brother. Extra fuel. A lot of people, we were training for a strong man, myself and Sinclair, and all of a sudden things start to get a little what to say, shaky because I don't know if he had injuries or so. At the same time, he were, we were both preparing for a championship, which is um, senior bodybuilding. I won the title that same year also. So... That year for me, powerlifting was off the charts. But see, bodybuilding and strongman and arm wrestling, whew, I was smoking the scenes. So everybody's like, oh, Carlos, powerlifting is done with Carlos. He's he gone to the bad side now. I say, gone to the bad side. I say, hold on, wait till 2020 come. Trust me, I was running on steam. 2020 came, boop, COVID. I like, said, shit, put it on pause. I had a little refrain for financial difficulties almost everywhere, but I was able to survive a day like today. 2021, kick off, set off certain stuff. Qualify myself again, no ox. I have the tiger again in me. Start share some licks. Tell now, buddy. Tell now. A long road. So you've been from 2014 when Morgan took you under his wing. That's 10 years ago. This is a 10-year yes, journey to get here. So for a lot of people who are like, he's the new kid, for you, it's like there's nothing new about this for you. You've been yeah. doing this. I've been doing it, but not to that top level yet. Now I'm right. able to do it at the top level. Right. Right. And you had said you were in Sweden for 2019 Worlds? Yes. Is that right? Yeah. So, Which is crazy. I remember that World Championships when, when Ray, like that's when Ray bombed out. And, mm, yep. Right. Brett Gibbs versus Russell Orhi. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was a I believe that same game. year. I believe that same year Brett Gibbs uh, retained his title or he lost. I just can't fully recall. Russell but, took uh, it that uh, year. Russell yeah, took that it that same year. year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I believe that same year is when Brett Gibbs, uh, uh, I think he hung up his gloves. I never saw he him. He hasn't back. been back. That's right. He hasn't been back. He, he's, yeah, he he's was, he was great. He was great. Oh, he's phenomenal. So, uh, did you did you just go there to watch? 
<laughs> now you now now you're hitting the hammer on the right nails. All right, here's what. After I got suspended from returning from uh, Barbados, my uh, I had gotten through with the Schengen visa. Everything I'd been through the full six miles to get to Sweden. On the last minute, when I was uh, let's say preparing to go to Sheffield, um, preparing to go to Sweden. The Federation sent me a notice, oh, Carlos, um, X and Y and Z, due to your participation in Barbados, you've been suspended from that time to X time. I was like, you guys could suspend me? I don't give a damn. I'm going to Sweden. Mm. Yeah. I went, I talked to Mr. Gaston Paraj, I talked to Mr. Armstrong, I spoke to um, Robert Keller. The told said, hey, the Federation doesn't... In fact, the Federation pulled you out, so... Sorry, we can't do anything about it. I said, like, all right, no problem. At that same time, there's two former world champions yeah, that I reach out to for help and all those stuff told me certain words in which recently I told them the same words that they told me. And I was like, thank you very much for your help, but sorry, I can't see myself having a decent conversation with you. So when you treat me bad, my brother, and I succeed, Trust me, the same results you're going to get, bro. Mm. Honestly speaking. You wish me well, I wish you well. You wish me bad, I wish you bad too. But here's what. I'm going to keep smiling and keep cheering you on. Honestly speaking. So I never give up. Full, this has come full circle now. That the yes. picture... Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And it all stuck right back to 2019. Now people are going to be wondering, well, who was a world champion in 2019? Well, I could tell you the, 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 the world champion in 2019. That's Anatoly. Right. Anatoly. And I believe, uh, uh, no, not Hanlon. The next guy. I have pictures with uh, all of that same year. Ellis McLean took fourth or fifth. He didn't podium. He podium individually, yes. But he did not... Um, did it for totals. I'm gonna bring it up right now. I'm gonna see the uh let me it's been a minute. I remember that world championships for my man. And um let me see, let's bring back 2019 classic world championships. Here it is. The men's I think Headland came in. Yeah, Headland came in silver. David Wilson from the US came in bronze. I remember that. Hey, yeah, LS McLean took fourth. Barry from Ireland took a fifth. Mm -hmm. gotcha, yeah, gotcha. I know I left McQueen for sure. Kyle. We used to chat in and out. But one thing I know for sure, he's one, I could tell you this yeah, after that. He is one of the guys never shown me or put me in a car and he's like, yo, you go for it. Uh, you just stay put. Whatsoever people tell you, you just take a, a pinch of salt, my brother. That's the type of dude that L.S. McLean is. Trust me. But the other two USA athletes that I reach out to, trust me, I see them and say, hmm. honestly speaking, yep, I'm not calling names because they're going to start pointing their fingers and I don't even care. It I'm, is what it I'm is. Right where, I'm right where you guys are at now. That's the beauty part of it. There's that. Uh, sorry, we won't have that, uh, what we could say, intelligent conversation anymore. Hmm. Interesting, man. Maybe at some point. Uh, now I'm dying yeah. to find out, but we'll talk yeah. about it some other time. <laughs> You're going to figure it out. I'll figure it out. <laughs> or maybe the same person is going to pop in and tell us, hey, X and Y and Z. Right. But maybe. There's something I always say, um, lap of that. Everyone willing to judge you on many levels. And what I will say is, uh, you need to read the book first before you judge the book. When you when you read the book, you understand, you're able to judge it quite well. It's like, here's what. The guy has his time. The guy has his words. The guy has his ego. He has his attitude or whatever. But damn, bro, you got to give respect when you see it, bro. That's all. That's why for a lot of, in a lot of ways... This whole world, Sheffield, is a redemption for you to prove that you're on this level with everyone else. In anything anybody said previously about suspensions or whatever the heck, you're like, good, good. 
let me get water tested. Let me get blood tested. Everything that goes with being at a world championship, everything with go that goes with going to Sheffield, it clears everything up, doesn't it? This is like a a huge moment for you to, yeah. to prove a lot of things on a lot of different areas for you. Yeah. Hey, I saw my brother. I tell you this here. You see, if you don't learn certain things along the journey, it doesn't make sense for you to go do something all over again. You know what I mean? A lot of people, we have a saying here in Guyana. And even a lot of Caribbean, um, the Caribbean heaven spirit says it a lot. If you stamp your toe here, it's a mistake. If you stamp your toe tomorrow on the same spot, it's a coincidence. But if you stamp your toe on the same spot the third day, it becomes a habit. Mm. So something is either you're doing something wrong or either you're doing something right. So you got to take it, whether right or wrong. Simple. Hmm. This is going to be an interesting Sheffield, babe. I'm already hyped. I think a lot of people are, when they listen to this podcast, are going to start Putting you in with the big guns, putting you in with the big names, and taking it no, seriously. No, like no, 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 no. You don't think so? Not the big guns. The big names, yes, but not the big guns yet. When I get there, then. But just that, you, you um, put it this way. It's like you, you make an egg, right? You fry an egg. We're gonna put it as simple as that. You fry an egg. You don't want to make an omelet. But then I was telling you, you put a pinch of salt, you put the thing, uh, a little bit of black pepper, and then all of a sudden, it's like you, uh, something pop up, and you fill it, and uh, you went to do it, and you come out, he's like, did I put salt? You, see, you might see the black pepper. I'm just going to add a little bit of all-purpose seasoning, right? Adobo, or whatever. And then when you taste the egg, when they're ready, like, shit, this is corn. <laughs> I'm that person. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if I follow, but I'm hungry as shit right now. <laughs> no, that, that's what that's what I'm saying. The destruction when you come back, they're like, "Hey, did I put salt in the egg?" Yeah, I'm that destruction. Ah, gotcha. So yeah, it'll so be afterwards when we look back, they'll they'll think about it differently. I nah, like, damn, they, 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 they're not going to say it's salty. They're like, yo, this is steam. <laughs> all I'm saying, all I'm saying, the top guns know me. You know I me? Mean? The top guns know me. I'm not in the B team anymore, as you mentioned earlier, right? Right. Look, no. Now, when a lot of people doing, uh, let's say, like what SBD did last year for Worlds, you have... Uh, the top five guns, Keiko, Chance, Honlan, Amir, and Gavin, right? Mm -hmm. Big guns, all of a sudden, Chance then went, and then you have Sasha. Oh, the spirit is nowhere there, right? right. Nowhere there. But, but this year, Carlos Peterson is, I'm walking with a needle, small needle. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be in. You'll be mentioned with the big guns. All right. Talking about mentioning the big guns. Um, I got a game I play sometimes on the podcast called the name game. So I'll say a name and then you say either one word, two words, as many words as you like that you think of when you hear the name. Mm. Okay, so if I say, if I, this is easy one, but if I say Keiko, you might say big bench or whatever. You, you can say mm. two words, one words, or, or uh, and some people end up getting into stories. So that you don't have to be limited if you don't want to. Up to you. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, but we, anyway. all know, we all know Kaiko has a big bench, buddy. Yeah, that's, well, that's it. That was the easy low-hanging fruit I got off there. But um, all right. Name game, my friend. The first name on the name game. Let's do it. Jonathan Kaiko. Uh, Mr. Bench. Mr. Bench. Gustav Hedlund. Don't ring a bell. 
<laughs> He's good. You should look him up. How about this guy? Gavin Aiden. Mr. Hype. No lie. Chance Mitchell. Oh, I'm a rivalry. Brennan Petrie. Uh, I don't know much about him, but uh, I'll look it up. Emil Karastev. Good contender. Amar Kanan. Hmm. Good squatter. Anatoly Novopismani. Powerful. Um, Jesus Oliveres. The beast himself. And one oh, well, more. Well, the beauty part about the beauty part about Oliver is maybe he's a one twenty plus, and that guy he's in a league of his own, buddy. Yeah, league of his no, own. He is. He's yeah. I'm really excited to see what he does at Sheffield, man. It was crazy what he did last year. Go nine for nine, biggest total we've ever seen in powerlifting. Period. Tested, untested, whatever. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm excited. And how about one more? Uh, Penna from France. Penna Giotis from France. I would give him the little cream, buddy. <laughs> you what? You what? You... Yeah, that, that dude is a small cream. Trust me. He's a small cream. Small cream? Cream, cream. The machine? Oh, cream. Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. No, he, man, he is. He's, he's, a, he's a little monster. But uh, yeah. anyways, listen, man. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Do you sell like coaching or anything or that's somewhat that we could plug for you, for everyone listening? Yes. Uh, I, well, I don't sell coaching because I don't really have a format or a body or so. But uh, again, I'm an open broker. Uh, currently, I'm pursuing my coaching certificate. Yes, sir. I would love to um, travel to Sweden to get it uh, officially. But uh, I got to do it slowly as possible because, again, I don't have that amount of resources here. I got to, uh, what you could say, I got to market myself and not just to uh, get funds. Uh, but when it comes to sport, it's all about marketing. Other than that, uh, I got a 10 hours, sometimes a 12 hour. I got to go make a dollar, put bread on the table. That's how it goes. But other than that, anyone can reach out to me. You need uh, programming. You need uh, certain training. Uh, Parts I could be able to set out that for anyone. I'm an open book because today, tomorrow, no more. There's the next thing too I will, wanted to speak about. There's a lot of coaches out there. Everything is money, 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 money. Oh, come on, man. You're going to die with the world of money and you cannot repay your own life. I got, I got this. I got that to say. You could build the greatest mansion. You're not carrying it with you, buddy. Yes, you're going to be live wealthy and everything. You're carrying food to the grave. You would like to give back to people who were like you in your situation when you needed help and no one was helping you. You want to be yes. the person you needed when you needed them. Yes, sir. I, I, I already doing that right here in Guyana. I'm not even looking back for one cent. A lot of people are like, oh, Carlos, I need this, I need that. How can I do this? Okay. Right, here's what. Work with my belt for the next two days or three weeks or so. you good, buddy. Save up your money. Yeah, I I literally loan my gears up. Now I have enough. I didn't have shit, bro. Honestly speaking, I have to be saving five, six hundred, or even a thousand bucks to bring in a decent uh, in the belt or a decent uh, uh, singlet or uh, a yellow jacket sleeves. And up to now, I still have them. I could be able to look back. I could even to go in my uh, my old suitcase. I was like, yo, here's where I started, buddy. Here's where I started. My very first squat shoes, a friend where I used to work uh, in Aurora Gold Mines, uh, he bought it for me. And up to day like today, I still have it. So I was doing some, uh, what you could say, I refurbished it, 100. It's functional. And, <laughs> excuse me, I took out a picture and I said to him, He's like, damn, Carlos, 
you can keep. I say, yes, I know where I came from. I know where I was. I know where I'm going. You know what? You, um, I don't know what certificate you're meaning in Sweden, but I don't know if you need, you know how many coaches are out there that don't have whatever certificate that is. I don't think you need that certificate. You do what you do at the world championships. You do what you can do at Sheffield. You in, in things play out. Like you think I would love if you had, if you could do some kind of program or whatever, you work with somebody really like, look, I want my stuff to be available to whoever wants it. Just take it. Here's my advice on squatting. Here's some programs that work for me. Just take it. And then whatever kid on the come up from whatever nation who can't afford it, doesn't have to reach out. Like you said, that, that'd be huge, man. That's a huge yeah, man. giving back you could do. And yeah, I, I already, as I mentioned, I already started here, but again, only recently I not too long hit a thousand followers on IG. That's going to change it to Sheffield, man. Sheffield blows up people's social media and um, everything's going to change, man. You got to post though. You got to like, I can help you out, but you got to post and we can do collaborative and stuff. And um, I can help you blow it up, but we, we got it. You know, we got to see me. We got to see that 365 deadlift. I think we post it. We do a collab. <laughs> here's what here's what hit me up via whatsapp uh, hit me up on IG I'm going to send you my whatsapp and I will send you some stuff you could do it all your editing or whatever but I'm not giving you my bench I'm not giving okay. you my bench keep the bench that's okay I'm excited to see it but that's okay and then we'll we could collaborate and um, then people go to your IG because we'll both, both be on collab posts there and it'll help out yeah, and, man, I much um, appreciate it, buddy. You Very bet, much man, appreciate I got it. You. And you're doing, like, I love what you're doing, man. Giving back and, like, helping out. There's going to be some kids that are on the come up and they need what you're going to give. So, I uh, trust. Man, we want to make it big right here in Guyana. Thank you for coming on the podcast. I appreciate your time, your training, everything you're doing. Um, I'll see you in Sheffield, man. Good luck, my brother. And I'll see you, I'll see you at Worlds after that. My brother, thank you once again. Again. Not just to have me, but uh, for the exposure, for the time, and also your sacrifice behind the sport. Because uh, I know for sure you're right there and you were able to bring up a previous championship in which you already know what's up. But again, I'm willing to make my my own name, name my own uh, branding, which is the showstopper. Trust me, I'm coming, I'm coming to show the world what's up. I love it, man. The show stop is coming to the show at Sheffield. Make sure everybody watches. And for everybody listening, please do please do subscribe as usual. And until next time, six pack lapidat, six up, and we are out.